Hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. JB here with JB's RCs. Thanks for stopping by. It's your first time here. We're doing Red Cat Week this week. As you can see, that was my lineup of Red Cats. And we've already done almost all of them, so we're down to the last video now. This is the Red Cat Danchi Ridge Rock. This was my very first one-tenth crawler, so open the door for me to my one-tenth crawler uh, addiction, if you will. <laughs> Because I have a lot of them now. And of course, I still have this um, for two reasons. One, because of nostalgia, of course. Like I said, this opened the door for me for these one tenth scales. Um, I have been doing a bunch of crawling before I got this one with some smaller and even cheaper uh, 16th and 18th scales, the WPLs. I had three or four of those and really liked them. Um, finally got a kit in one of those. It was the C24 and really liked the way that went together and got some nice gearing and motor and ESC in there. Uh, and it really changed the whole outlook of crawling for me. Um, so I got this as my next step up and was incredibly impressed right off the bat. Uh, matter of fact, I was more impressed with this than probably half of the other one tenth scale crawlers I got out of the box. Uh, for one, the price on this was super low at the time. Um, but I got this four or five years ago and it was just over a hundred dollars. So at that point, even then, that was an insanely cheap model. Uh, now they're, I believe they're up in the 120, 130 range, but still compared to the four and five hundred dollar RTRs that are out there, um, still a deal. You can buy three or four of these for the price of one of those. Um, and still, every time I take it out, I get really amazed by this truck. Now this is the only motor on axle truck that I have. So when I first bought this, of course, it's again, just getting into the hobby, uh, I didn't realize that this was a little bit of a different setup than most. Um, it does have that clawed stall because of that, so there's a motor on each axle. Of course, when you're going uphill, all the weight of the truck is on the rear tire, so the front ones want to spin a little easier. So when you're pushing on the throttle, the amount of juice that's going to both motors is pretty much the same, I would imagine. Um, and of course, with more drag on the rear and less on the front, the front tires turn and the back don't. They call that clog stall. Uh, totally normal for a uh, truck like this, and I believe there are certain ways you can get rid of that. Um, there's a couple different ESC options I believe you can put in there uh, where you can adjust the voltage where you maybe give a little more to the front or the rear than the front so that it's constantly pushing. But I actually enjoy that, especially when you're crawling up. It's nice to have the front tires spinning a little bit before the back tires do to help kind of pull you up over. Um, so other than that, this thing is ridiculous though. As you can see, especially if you've been watching my other videos, uh, we ran the Gen 7, we ran the Marksman, we got the Gen 8 Axe Edition, and this guy has, is going everywhere that they went. Um, and those are two or three times or four times the price of what this is. Uh, now, of course, it's not stock anymore. I did do a few upgrades to it. It is a very light truck, so I added a little bit of weight there. It's got some brass weights on the front axle. Uh, we did drop it down a little bit because it does set quite high. So I got some um, shock extenders set up in there. Uh, matter of fact, the top of the shocks on this now, and there's still the stock shocks and springs, and I've never rebuilt them or re-oiled them. So again, four and a half, five years old, and these are still the stock shocks and springs. Um, but they, they are touching the inside of the body on the inside there, so they're way up high. Um, dropped it down quite a bit. Give it a little bit lower center of gravity, which helped a lot. Um, we also put some metal steering arms on there. It did have servo savers on it and plastic steering arms. And with the four-wheel steer, which it does have, um, those plastic arms would bend a lot, especially on the wheels that you didn't want turning. Um, it would make them turn when they would get stuck in crevices and against cracks. And uh, even with just more torque on one side or the other of the axle would make it turn the tires. So I put the metal uh, upgrades on there. I handmade the long piece that goes from tire to tire on front and rear and then I bought the short piece that was adjustable that goes from the steering horn to the long arm uh, and then we put metal steering horns on there to get those servo savers off and a huge difference that would to me that would be the very first upgrade anybody should do with this uh, out of the box would be metal steering components uh, it made a huge difference uh, for controllability and it really does help especially with that clog stall um, when the tires are spinning, you get one tire that might grip and it wants to turn all the time. So this really controlled this and settled this down quite a bit. Uh, other than that, the usual, I got some 1.9 metal beadlocks on there. We're running the J Concepts Tusks, the 475 size. 
They're running stock foams, but I do have some lead weights in the tires, all four. Uh, again, for a little extra weight down low. That combined with the lower center of gravity and the brass weights on the front axle and the metal steering, which again is a little heavier than the plastic steering, really makes this just about perfect as far as weight balance goes. Um, still forward heavy with that brass I put on there. And then the very last thing I did was uh, it did have a cage body on it. Uh, and I switched this out to the uh, Traxxas TRX4 Sport body. Of course, had to do some trimming and all that. But right now the body is kind of what stops the wheels from flexing. Um, if the body wasn't there, those wheels would flex a lot more with that suspension that's on there. But I like it just where it is. Too much flex. Get your, uh, again, your center of gravity up, especially with my tires weighted like they are. Uh, that one tire being way up in the air throws that weight up in the air. So uh, side hilling and stuff too much is, is uh, to, in my opinion, too much flex is, is not good. So maybe some guys like too much flex. And trust me, when I first saw this truck, uh, when I took it out of the box, you could leave one axle setting on the ground and turn either of the other axles uh, to pretty much a 90 degree straight up and down. And the truck, the other axle would still be flat. This was a crazy articulation truck. Uh, and with that cage body that it had, of course, there was nothing to stop the tires from articulating as far as they possibly could. So I, I limited that a bit. I'd say it's got around uh, between a 90 and a 100 millimeter shock amount of flex on it now. There's still plenty. Um, as you see like right there, yeah, see how that front tire just dropped? That's no problem. But so composed, so much better, and really enjoy this truck. Um, sorry about the uh, wind noise. I did cut it out for most of the video, I think, just so... It's not so annoying, it's super windy if you haven't noticed all the bushes and everything blowing in the background. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by. Please like, comment, subscribe and smash that notification button. Always feel free to share my videos and get out there and have some fun.